Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the idea of specificity in CSS. Specificity is actually an important concept to understand if you really want to have control over your work with CSS. Really quickly, let's just see what we mean when we're talking about specificity. Over here you can see I have a simple H1 tag with some text content of hello. And on it I have two different selector types. I have an ID of hello and I also have a class of hello. Now I've linked up this styles.css file here. And as you can see, I've given a color green to class hello, and I've given a color of red to ID hello. So the question is, which one of these is gonna win out? Right, this H1, it can only be one color. It's only either gonna be green or red. So the browser has to make a determination, which color is it gonna go with? So what do you think? Is it gonna be green or is it gonna be red? Well, let's flip over to the browser and take a look. And here we can see hello with the color red. So you might be saying to yourself, well, the ID of hello comes later in the file, so it overrides this class hello. But what if we take this ID hello declaration and we move it before the class hello? So in this case, will class hello override ID hello? If that's the case, the word hello should be green now. Let's flip over to the browser and see what we get. Oh, you can see hello is still red. And this is what specificity is all about. It's not simply about which declarations come later in the file. There are certain specificity rules which we need to learn. And that's what we're about to do right now. So I think the most important thing to start out understanding is how these three types of selectors relate. So here we can see we have an ID, we have a class, and we have an element. And I've listed them here in this order because this is the order of importance or weight that the browser gives to each one of these when deciding which one to go with. So out of these three, the ID is the one that gets the most weight. If we look back at the example I showed previously, what you could see was that the ID declaration, this one here of ID hello, it won out regardless of whether it was after class hello or before class hello. So you can think of the ID selector as being given more importance by the browser. But second on that list is the class. Even though it's given less weight than the ID, it's still given more weight than the element selector. So what would the element selector be? Well, let's get rid of this ID hello, and instead let's use the element selector type. So since the tag is an H1, the element selector would simply be H1, the name of the tag. So let's give that a color of fuchsia. And let's take a look at the browser. And here we can see hello is still green. So that's being applied by this class. And even if I put the element selector H1 after the class selector, and we flip back to the browser, we can see that it's still green. And that makes sense because class selectors are considered more specific than element selectors. Now in the code editor that I'm using, which here is VS Code, if you hover over one of these style declarations, you can see this pop-up that appears and here you can see something that says selector specificity. In this case, we have selector specificity, and then we see a zero, one, and a zero. Let's try hovering over the H1 now and see what happens. So here we see selector specificity, but this time it says zero, zero, one. So now we're gonna talk about what these numbers mean, these numbers in parentheses. Basically, these numbers represent the weighting that each style declaration gets but we wanna look at it and understand it in a little bit more detail. So here you can see we have this HTML, a simple P tag surrounded by a body tag with some text content, dude is thinking, cause this dude is sitting here thinking about CSS specificity. Now let's say in our CSS, we use the element selector for the P tag or paragraph tag. So we had P and then we have font size 16 pixels. So in this case, the weighting of this would be 001. So let me tell you why that is. The way this weighting system works is that each one of these columns here, think of these as columns, represents a different selector type. So this first one, zero, would be any IDs that we have. The second one, which is now zero, would be any classes that we have. And this last column here, which is one, represents any element selectors that we have. And we have the number one because we are using an element selector in the style declaration. Right? We're not using any IDs or any classes. Let's look at another example. In this example, we have the exact same HTML, 
But check out the difference here. In the CSS, we're actually using two element selectors here. We're using body and then P, which is saying apply this style here, font size 16 pixels, to any paragraphs within a body tag. Since now we have two element selectors, we add those up and we put them in the third column. Again, still no IDs, no classes, but two element selectors, giving us two in this third column. And since this third column is a two, the CSS declaration here would be considered more specific than this one, the previous one, where we only had one element selector. Now let's check out this example here. Again, we have a simple paragraph tag within an enclosing body tag with the text content gal is thinking. But in this case, you can see that we've added a class selector. We've given this p tag a class of think. So let's say in our CSS, we did something like this. We said body paragraph dot think. So now we're selecting this element with two element selectors, body and p, but also with a class selector, think. So what do you think the weighting would be for this? Well, here it is, zero in the first column, right? No IDs, but we do have a one for the second column because we have one class. And again, we have two element selectors, the body and the paragraph, to give us two in this third column. And then check out one more example. We have the same HTML, except we've added an ID of thunk. And look at how we're selecting it. We have a body, paragraph, class of think, and ID of thunk. So how's this going to be represented? Well, check it out. We have body and P, which are elements. So we have two elements. And then we have a class, think. So we have one class. An ID of thunk. So we have one ID. So it's going to look like this. One in the ID column, one in the class column, and two in the element column. This style declaration is more specific than the previous one. So this more specific one would be the one that would win out. So like in the very first two examples that we saw, we had that first example where we just used the paragraph selector, and then we had that second example where we used the body and the paragraph selector. So the first one with just a paragraph tag would be represented by this here on the left, 0, 0, 1. And the one with the body and the paragraph tag would be represented by this here, 0, 0, 2. So what the browser is going to do to determine which one of these would win out or which one would have its styles applied it's going to start at the ID column, the first one. And in this case, it's going to say both of them have zero. So they're both equal. So then it would move on to the second column. And again, they both have zero. So they're both equal, equal in specificity. But then the browser would move on to the third column. And it would see that the first one only has one element. And the second one has two element selectors. So the second one would be the one to win out. And then the second two examples that we saw, the first of those examples had a weighting like this, zero IDs, one class, and two element selectors. The second of those examples had one ID, one class, and two element selectors. So in this case, the browser would start in the first column for both of them and immediately see that the second one had a one in the ID column. Since the first one had a zero, the second one wins out and its styles get applied. Now let's look at a couple more details about specificity. In this hierarchy of ID, class, and element, you should know that when we're talking about classes, in here we're also adding pseudo classes as well as attribute selectors. So this means that if you see a pseudo class or an attribute selector in your style declaration, they're going to get an equal weighting to a regular class. And in the same way for the element selector type, any pseudo elements are going to get an equal weighting to the element selector type. Now, believe it or not, there are a couple things that can override this hierarchy of ID class and element completely. The first thing is if we have any inline styles. Any inline styles applied to the tag directly would prevail over ID class or element. So coming back to this example, if I actually came into the H1 tag and included an inline style like this, let's say I declared color red. Now, even though we've made these declarations here in the CSS, if we flip back to the browser, we can see that that inline style with color red gets applied. So inline styles actually beat out IDs, classes, or elements. But it doesn't end there. There's actually one more declaration we can make that'll override everything. Inline styles, IDs, class selectors, element selectors. And that is 
important. It's actually considered to be bad practice to use important, but we can see how it works. Even here with the inline style declaration, if I come back now to my H1 and I write important like this, let's now go to the browser and you can see hello becomes fuchsia because important overrides everything. Another useful thing to know about specificity is which selectors are disregarded or not given any weight. And as you can see here, the universal selector, the star selector, is given no weight whatsoever. Same thing with the combinators. Those are disregarded. And also the negation pseudoclass. Even though we said the other pseudoclasses, like hover and active and so on, are given weight, the negation pseudoclass, or the not pseudoclass, is given no weight whatsoever. However, if we do pass in a class to the not declaration, that class that's passed in is given a weight just as a regular class selector. So thanks for checking out this video on specificity in CSS. If you enjoyed the video, if you feel like you got something out of it, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.